So here's everything you need to know about selling on Amazon using the arbitrage business model. Now, this video is assuming that you're a beginner, so it's gonna be an overview. It's not complicated to do this. I'm not gonna make it complicated, but you do need to stick around for the entire video. So first things first, let's take a quick look at my Amazon account because I'm not gonna get into anything until we make sure that I'm properly vetted as a person that would be qualified to teach you something. So the first thing we're gonna do is take a look at my Amazon account. Now let me see if I can highlight my mouse for you. There we go. Okay, so you can see today is December the 13th. The year is 2020. And so far, we have had today $1,428.56 in sales and that's today and then for the last seven days oh five thousand two hundred and sixty six dollars and eighty two cents for the past 15 days ten thousand five hundred and twenty nine dollars and nineteen cents and for the last running 30 days eighteen thousand one hundred and forty six dollars and thirty four cents and if we click in there a little deeper here's what i want to look at let's look at year to date right so you can see I've been I've had this channel since 2017 and you my numbers go up every year but last year we did $103,225.18 and so far we've done $191,091.27 we may actually get I didn't think we were going to do it but we may actually get to 200,000 okay so that's just to show you a little bit about where I'm at. And you know what? Tell you what, let's do this. Uh, we're looking at this year. Watch as I follow along. I want you to see how this business moves up and down. It's not always, you know, everything going great. So so in January of this year, we did 12,006. Feb, um, let me see, January, February, we did 12,000. 242 March we jumped up all the way up to 23,430 well that was at the height of uh, COVID the first wave because you'll notice then April we, we went down to 20,613 May 18,5 June 15,7 July 15,3 up a little bit in August 19 but then September down to 13.3, October 15.5, and then November up a little bit, 15.3. Uh, now, if we look, let's say we go month to date. So now we're just looking at the month of December. And you see this chart is all over the place, right? Six on the first, 683 on the uh, second, 264, on the third, 652, and then look at 512, all the way down to $77.72 over just four units on the sixth. But then what happened? 447, 587, 600, 1,557, then drop 1,019, then drop 976, and then so far 1,482, uh, $4,028.56. And that is, you know, that's just to show you that this is real, guys. And you have to understand, I'm doing this while working a full-time job as a truck driver. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be the guy that tells you, you do not wanna run away from work. This is work. This is not the channel that talks about the easy lifestyle. You're going to get everything for doing nothing. Automate everything, outsource everything. You know, that that's not me. So if that's not what you're about, trust me, I understand. Don't let me waste your time. But if you're going to hang around, let's do this. So the first things, and, and mind you, this is not going to take a lot. There's basically five things you need to know, and that's all you really need to know about 
arbitrage on Amazon. Now, of course, there's going to be a lot of nuances and a lot of details once you get into it. But this is for the for the newbie, the guy who just wants to know, hey, what is this all about? So the first question is, what is arbitrage? So arbitrage is where think of it like this, guys, if if you're going to sell on Amazon, you have to have inventory. So where are you going to get the inventory? Arbitrage is the method by which you bring in inventory. So with arbitrage, you go out to retail stores or you go to retail online sites and that's where you find your products. OK, versus other models like, for instance, wholesale, where you have to have a wholesale account, you go through your rep or whatever, or you go directly with the manufacturer or you're making products or you're taking products that are already made, slapping your label on it and calling it yours. This is the difference. Now, when you talk about arbitrage, there's retail arbitrage and there's online arbitrage. So retail arbitrage is where you're going into a retail store. A lot of times we shorten that to RA. So and then on online arbitrage, you're just you, you're at home, you're shopping online sites, a lot of the, your big box sites or wherever you can find deals. We call that OA for short. So learn your terminology. If you're going to be in the arbitrage game, you're going to be learning. You're going to be around other people. These are the types of terms that we use. We're talking arbitrage. We're talking RA. We're talking OA. OK, now arbitrage, whether it's RA or OA, it has its advantages. OK. And some of the advantages I like is that it's pretty easy to start. You start your Amazon account, you start sourcing, you're in. That's pretty much it. Uh, you tend to get better margins when you compare it to wholesale. A lot of people can't wait to get into wholesale. And then when they finally get that account, they finally find someone that's gonna give them a shot. They can't wait to get their hands on that catalog. And when they get it, they're saying, where are the margins? Where are my deals? How am I gonna sell this when I have to buy it for more than what people are selling it for on Amazon. You're going to find that a lot because wholesale, that's a whole nother ball of wax. Can you make money with wholesale? Of course, but that's another ball of wax. And I just wanted to put that out there to you in case you're thinking about it, because a lot of times people get into arbitrage, but in the back of my, their minds, they can't wait to get into wholesale. Surprise. OK. And another thing you can predict with relative accuracy how well a product is going to sell versus if you go out and have your own product manufactured or you white label a product, you really don't know because even if it's a product that's going to sell, maybe people don't want to buy it from you because you haven't established yourself. There's just a lot that goes into it. But when you're doing arbitrage, you can pretty much predict with relative accuracy whether or not you're going to be able to sell the product. And of course, we're going to get into that. We're going to touch on it in this video. Now, important. We're talking about arbitrage. This method does work. It is legal. Do not tell. Let anybody tell you that it is not. It is legal and you can make money and I'm going to show you that. But it is important that you get out of your own head. I, that is worth repeating. Get out of your own head because you're thinking one way. If you're not if, if, if you if you're not familiar with the business model, you're going to be asking yourself, why would somebody buy the product on Amazon and pay me more money than they could get it at the sites that I'm sourcing at? Get out of your head. That's not what this is all about. OK, you need to understand Now, this is part of, you know, we're talking about understanding what arbitrage is. Part of that is understanding how the market works. You need to understand the Amazon market. You need to understand that because what you're doing, essentially, if you're going to sell on Amazon, what you're doing is providing Amazon's customers, not yours, Amazon's customers with the products that they want. And you need to understand they tend to be loyal to Amazon. They're not like you. They're not going to go to Amazon and then go to 50 other sites trying to find how to save two dollars. They are loyal to Amazon. They have prime memberships. This is where they shop. Now, I want you to think about this. I want you to think about this. How many times have you been interested in a product and the first place you go is Amazon? Well, a lot of people do that. And a lot of people assume that Amazon is the cheapest place for products. Amazon is very good at having you assume that they're offering the cheapest products. They're not. That's how this works. This is how people are making a lot of money in arbitrage because the majority of people assume that Amazon is the cheapest. They're not. OK, so now that you understand how the markets work, you know what 
arbitrage is you need to know where to source your products where are you going to go to get that inventory well you're going to go anywhere you, all of your big box stores any retail stores especially retail when it comes to retail and the advantage you have you may have a store that no one else has you may have a store that everyone else has but your store has different inventory than everybody else because regional managers because local managers are buying the inventory that they know their local market is going to buy and it's not the same you can have two walls Walmart's two different, you know, inventories. Okay. So, uh, and you need to understand again, going into the terminology, as long as you're going to learn about what arbitrage is, you have to understand certain things. Now, when you go online, same thing, you're going to any store where you can find products and you can find that difference in the market where you can make a profit. Again, we're going to show that, give real examples of that. Uh, but Prime examples, you're gonna be at uh, Target, you're gonna be at Best Buy, you're gonna be at Bed Bath & Beyond, you're gonna be at Target, and you're gonna be at little sites that a lot of people never even heard of. You'll figure it out as you go along, okay? But when you go into retail stores, let me show you something. When you go into retail stores, you're gonna be browsing the shelves and you're gonna be using some sort of app to scan products so like let's say this is the amazon seller app and this is what it looks like when you uh when you pull it up on your phone you may also use uh another software uh called scoutify if i can find it here give me one second yeah so you may use scoutify but you have to have a way of quickly figuring out where that product is. Is it on Amazon's marketplace? How much is it selling for? What is the seller rank? Stuff like that. And you gotta have a way to quickly scan the barcode on the item and move through. Now, what, that's, that's retail arbitrage. You, yes, yes, you're gonna actually be standing in an aisle scanning a product. And trust me, nobody cares. So again, get out of your head thinking that everybody cares about you. They don't. And that's a good thing. Because now you don't need to be worried about it, okay? So another thing you need, some terminology you need to know about when it comes to arbitrage, you're going to hear people talking about replens. That's short for replenishables. That means inventory that you can continue to send in or sell on Amazon over and over and over again. People are looking for replens because that makes it easier. There is a lot of work that goes into sourcing products. There's a lot of data that you're evaluating when you get a product that you can sell over and over again that's great and then before you know it, you have 10 products that you can sell over and over again that's when things start to grow so when you hear people talk about replens that's what they're talking about okay so number two was knowing where to source products uh, number three you need to know how to tell if a product will sell okay so in order to know if a product is going to sell, you need to understand what sales rank is and you need to know how to read a keeper graph. So those are two things that you're going to be looking at. And I'm going to demonstrate those when we get into uh, a, a couple of examples that I want to show you on some products that I recently sold, like I sold today. OK, so just keep that in mind. You need to know how to tell if a product is going to sell and you're going to do that by understanding sales rank and how to read a free um, app called Keepa. It's actually an extension and I'll show that to you. Number four, you need to know how to figure out if there is a profit. You're going to do use the software that, for example, I showed you on my phone. That could either be the Amazon seller app or that can be scoutify or whatever else you got or you could use uh if you're online amazon gives a revenue calculator um it's a little more cumbersome but it works i do use it okay uh so that's number four and finally there's only one more thing guys you need to know number five how are you going to get that product to your customer? So again, your your arbitrage terminology, and this is not just unique to arbitrage. Anybody who's selling on Amazon knows about what's called FBA or FBM. FBA stands for Fulfillment by Amazon. That is where you take all of your inventory, you send it to Amazon. They let you use their deeply discounted UPS rates. 
I mean, it is so cheap to get that product in there. And then they will do everything for you. When the product sells on their platform, they will pick, they will pack, they will ship, they will deal with in inquiries, and they will deal with even returns. Basically, all you're doing is sourcing, getting the inventory into uh, the Amazon different warehouses, and they do the rest. There's advantages to that. There's disadvantages to that. Moving over to FBM, which is fulfillment by merchant, fulfilled by merchant. You're selling the product, you have it, you're listing on Amazon, the product sells, you get it to the customer, you update the system, that way Amazon and their customer knows what's going on with the shipment, and yes, it needs to be done in a timely fashion, or you go, or they, they'll let you know real quick, okay? But it can be done, and I'm gonna show you that. Both have their advantages. Obviously, if you're doing FBA or fulfillment uh, by Amazon, it's great because you don't have a lot of the, the legwork, the little nuances and the time consuming parts of the business. So you can just focus on where your time is probably better spent, which would be actually sourcing products and getting inventory to the warehouses. That's an advantage. But there's a disadvantage to that. I'm here to tell you and I'm going to demonstrate that. But let me just say real quick, when you when you go FBA, everybody wants to talk about the advantages, how great it is. Oh, it's sexy because you don't have to deal with all of that, but you pay a price. Let me explain. There is time, the time that it takes from the time that you source the product to the time that you get the product to you. Okay, and of course that's gonna be longer if you do an online arbitrage because you can't have your product sent right to uh, Amazon. Even if you're using a prep center, you cannot have the product sent right to Amazon. It's either going to have to come to you or it's going to have to come to go to a prep center, which adds even more time. And we're not even talking about prep centers. That's another video. Okay. Then you got to get the product sent in to Amazon. There's the transit time. Then there's the time that it takes for Amazon to get to it. When are they going to get to it? They're going to get to it when they get to it. Then they, they have to inventory it. Then after they inventory it, guess what? Then they decide, oh, well, you sent in 20 units. You know what? You know what? We told you to send those 20 units here. Well, we want to send three over here. We want to send four over here. Or we want to send one over there. Your inventory, if you're lucky, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't do FBA because I do it, but if you're lucky, your products are ready and available in a week. I'd say, I'd confidently say a week and a half to two weeks. Okay, that's time. That's time. If you're willing and able to fulfill the, the, the inventory yourself, okay? If you can ship it yourself, you could literally get that inventory and turn it right out the door the same day. And I'm gonna demonstrate that. OK, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a look at an example of um, a couple of things I want to show you that I was able to do. I want to give you some examples of, of how this works. So watch this. OK, so here's what we're looking at. We're looking at this product. It's a Cuisinart three quart saucepan with cover. Now, uh, close that. This is how that product looks on Amazon. Okay. Now, when you come down, number one, you're looking at the sales rank and you can see that rank. This is actually, you're not going to see it like this and just unless you're using the extension that I'm using. That's this extension called Scanalyze. I like it because then I don't have to come down. Normally, you would have to come down into the product description and you would have to find the sales rank here. Now, I can tell you right off the top of my head, 81,000 in kitchen and dining is good. We're not going to get into it, but the point is this. Your rank tells you how popular the product is. The lower the number, the better. But you're going to learn what percentile a certain rank puts you in depending on the category. You'll learn that over time. Okay. The next thing I'm looking at 
Remember, we talked about sales rank. We talked about keeper chart. This is a keeper chart, okay? And that is how I made a decision that this product would be able to sell. I know how to read it. That we got other videos that talk about that. I'm not going to get into that right now, but you're going to hear people talking about keeper charts, keeper graphs. You know, this is how I made a decision in order to, to know, hey, this product has a great chance at selling. Now, watch what happens here. I want you to pay attention so that you can see that this really works. So I bought these at Bed Bath & Beyond. Here they are, Cuisinart three quart saucepans with cover. I bought 10 of them. They cost $39.99 each. But if you notice, now this software right here, this is where I keep, do my inventory. This is where I do my books and everything. It's called Inventory Lab. There it is in Inventory Lab. And you'll notice the cost per unit is $37.99, even though you see $39.99. That's because I, it's, I show you in other videos how to take advantage. If you notice, I saved um, $100 here and another $50 here. And that's how I ended up paying $373.89. Move that decimal point over one, and that's where you got your $37.39. 37.39. Okay. Now, here's what I want to show you. I want you to I want you to pay attention here. This is the email that you get when you um, when you get a sale on Amazon. So here's here's what happened. What is this? This this is telling me when to ship by. But today. The order date is the 13th. That's today's date, guys. Now, here's where I want you to pay attention. If it's sold today, when did I get it? Okay. So, if we go to track the order, you let that load. This got delivered to me yesterday. It sold today. Now, I want you to think about that. It got to me yesterday. It sold today. If I was going to ship this into the into the warehouse, ask any anybody that, that, that does Amazon FBA. These wouldn't be there and inventory in time for Christmas, most likely. OK. Um, but now let's get let's let's look at the numbers on this. OK, let me get my calculator going. Now, look at. We sold it for $89.76. By the time Amazon applied, they took out the taxes because they're the market facilitator. They had fees. They charged me $13.46. At the end, this is what they gave me. They gave me $76.30. Okay. Now, what did we say we paid per piece? We paid... 37.39, okay? So that left us with 38.91. Now, I gotta ship the product. So what did I pay to ship the product? Uh, let's see here. Okay, so there it is right there. This is the three quart saucepan it cost me $9.61 to ship it UPS ground, okay? $29.30, almost $30. And all I did was order the product, let it come to me, turn it right back out okay and today is sunday guys these will be gone gone by the end of the week i'm going to show you one more okay okay so now we're going to look at another product this is a cuisinart 11 cup food processor right now 
The order date was yesterday, the 12th, okay? Now, this is what they paid $279.79, right? But after Amazon took their $41.97 fees, I'm sorry, guys, this is business. This is how it works. I got left with $237. Oops, let me get that right. $237.87. Now watch what happens here. Uh, let's see. I bought this from a site called Everything Kitchens, okay? And with tax and everything, I paid $169.55. So we got to take that out, right? $169.55. That left me with $68.27. But I gotta ship it, right? How much are we gonna pay in shipping? All right, let's go out. So here it is, and I ended up paying uh, $16.02, okay? So, and again, that was UPS Ground. Let's see. Uh, Sixteen dollars and two cents. So we made fifty-two dollars and twenty-five cents. But look it. When we go here, it is. When we go and track that order. Let's track that. That came on the 10th and it's gone on the 12th. So guys, this this works. This works. And if you want to that again, that was an example of merchant fulfilled, okay? You want to say, "Oh, I'm not set up for that." I don't want to hear it. You can do it. Okay, here is the box. Here's the product right here. This is it. This is the food processor. You see it with your own two eyes. And you know what? All I did was slap a, a label on it and it's going right back out the door. So you're not gonna tell me that this, does, that this doesn't work. You're not gonna tell me that you're not able to do it. You're not gonna tell me your excuses, okay? so. You know, what you want to do is continue to learn. Watch our other video that gets into the real, the seven steps to figuring out how to uh, to determine if you can make a profit with a product. But now uh, you got an overview. From there, what you want to do is start learning because one of the ways, the, well, pretty much the only way I find products is with a software called Tactical Arbitrage. I'm not gonna get into it right now, but there is a free lightning course. There's a lightning course part two. All of that is down in the description. Guys, you don't wanna miss it. it it's, gonna, it's gonna teach you everything. And yes, you could be doing the same thing that I'm doing. I help people all the time. And on that note, Please, if you want to connect, text the words working class hustler to the number on the screen. It's not a robot. It's not a computer program. It's me. So if it takes a little time, please be patient. But I do respond. I'll get you saved into my contacts. A lot of people are out there talking a lot of stuff. And a lot of people, you know, I'm, I'm an older guy. I'm 51 years old. But a lot of people want to talk about uh all of this stuff as far as social media, you're not connected with me. If you're not in my cell phone, I don't know you. We're not connected. And I'm giving you the opportunity to really connect with me. It's real. Ask any of the working class hustlers. Ask them in the comments right now. Hey, is this guy for real? Do you have real conversations, both text and phone calls? Just when I have a question, they're going to tell you. <laughs> it's a wonderful thing. They love it. So don't hesitate. Okay. 
uh, I will tell you, you probably want to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification so that you can be notified when we come out with with other videos. Um, it's only it's it's only for your benefit. So I'll see you guys in the next video.